Organisms may live in flocks, herds, pairs, or as solitary individuals, or they may cluster around resources such as water holes. Distribution may vary with time, changing with the breeding season, for example. Ecologists recognize three major types of spatial distribution, aggregated, uniform, and random. The most common pattern of distribution is aggregated, in which members of the population tend to live in groups. Many species form family or social groupings, such as elephant herds, baboon troops, flocks of birds, or schools of fish. What are the advantages of aggregation? Flocks provide many eyes on the lookout for localized food, such as a tree full of fruit. Schooling fish avoid predation by confusing the predator with countless flashing bodies darting in all directions. Some species, such as elephant seals, form temporary aggregations for mating. Other plant or animal populations cluster not for social reasons, but because resources such as nutrients, shelter, or water are localized. For example, cottonwood trees grow along streams and rivers and grasslands, while many species of animals aggregate around water holes in the dry savanna of Africa. Uniformly distributed organisms maintain a relatively constant distance between individuals. Spacing is often the result of defending scarce resources, such as breeding sites, nutrients, or water. This distribution occurs most frequently among animals that defend territories. Shorebirds and others, like these African penguins, are also found often in evenly spaced nests, just out of reach of one another. Other territorial species, such as many birds of prey, mate for life, and mating pairs continuously occupy well-defined, very large, and relatively uniformly spaced territories. Desert plants growing in poor soil with limited water, such as the creosote bush, have chemical spacing mechanisms that assure adequate resources for each individual. Likewise, many animals, such as large cats, mark their territories by chemical means to avoid violent face-to-face -face confrontations. Random distribution is the least common. Here, individuals do not form social groups. The resources they need are, more or less, equally available throughout the area they inhabit, and resources are not scarce enough to require territorial spacing. Trees and other plants in rainforests come close to being randomly distributed. There are probably no vertebrate species that maintain random distribution throughout the year because they must breed, a behavior that makes social interaction inevitable. But other than breeding and coming together to feed at prime feeding locations during salmon runs, bears spend most of their time largely in randomly spaced isolation from one another, except, of course, sows and their cubs.